So once you've treated and inoculated your substrate, then we're into the incubation phase. So incubation is a period of time from two to four weeks where the mycelium is growing through the material and fully colonizing it. So it's completely covered in mycelium. And we do this in an incubation chamber where we set up uh, specific parameters to help support that. So we're ready to take our buckets into the cultivation space. This is basically a high tunnel that we've built and tucked into a hedgerow so it gets partial shade. It has shade cloth over it, and we're basically using the plastic as a way to capture humidity and temperature and help regulate what's going on inside. And we've subdivided the high tunnel into two different chambers, one for the incubation of the mycelium, where it grows through the straw, and then the second for fruiting. And so we'll look at the different parameters for each room to have the best success. We have a little warning sign on here because this is the most important place to be clean when you go and this is when the mycelium is moving through the straw so incubation is when your opportunities for contamination are highest so we really want to think about if we're ready to go into the room which i feel pretty clean and ready to go so let's bring these in So incubation chamber is the first stage. Again, sanitation is important, so I'm bringing my bottle in and I'm gonna you know, spray it on my hands if I'm gonna touch anything. And what we have here are all the kind of different weeks inoculations. The buckets are gonna be in here for somewhere between two and four weeks. The biggest consideration is that the temperature stays right around 70 degrees. We have both a cooling unit as well as a heater. And so, and then the switch over here is monitoring the internal temperature and can switch the heater and cooler on and off. So it's consistency is what's most important. And so you can think about insulating a space or any of the other strategies to kind of keep it very constant. What's most important is not actually the air temperature, but the temperature inside of here. As the mycelium is moving through the straw, it actually is putting off heat through part of its digestion process. So the mortality of this can happen when these mycelial growths get over 90 degrees. So we have this probe thermometer here and we can see that the internal temperature is just about 70 degrees, which is perfect. If we get into that green space, that's when I have to start thinking about cooling things down more. So the other thing we can do while we're checking in here is just kind of monitor how the growth is going. If we open up this one, Mostly the white is good, but we have a little bit of green in here. So this is a little bit of mold, and we want to monitor that. We can sometimes remove some of that contaminated material, and it'll keep growing. So here's the oyster mycelium, and then some of this green mold here. This is contamination. So here's a good example of a bucket that's ready to go. So really nice white mycelium all over the bucket. No green, no contamination and it's ready to go. So to summarize the incubation chamber, most important consideration is stable temperature. We're thinking about not the external as much as the internal temperature. And we're thinking about contamination as a potential issue, we're monitoring for that. And once the bucket's fully grown through of white mycelium, we see it on the top and we see it on the sides, then it's time to move these buckets into the fruiting chamber. So for both chambers, it's really important to have fresh air coming in, more so for the fruiting than incubation but this is just a carbon filter with a little sock over it and the fan will draw in air uh, for a little bit every hour it's just to put some fresh air into the room in the fruiting chamber we really have to think about replacing the air so that there's constantly a, a fresh supply or else we won't have good fruiting mm. welcome to the fruiting room a couple more things to monitor in here than when we compare it to the incubation room. We want to think about light, air, temperature, and humidity. So humidity should be as high as possible. Right now it's about 98% in here. With air, we need good airflow. We want to think about making sure the carbon dioxide level isn't too high because as these are fruiting, they're actually giving off carbon dioxide. So we bring in fresh air about every 20 minutes and we push out all this stale air to keep it fresh. Uh, light, we want to keep it nice and dim, not any direct sunlight or light hitting the mushrooms. And then temperature, it's gonna depend a bit on what we're fruiting. Right now we're fruiting these blue oysters 
and those like it around 65, 70 degrees. So let's look at some buckets that are ready to fruit. Uh, if we take off this lid here, we can see really good uh, mycelial growth in here. It's eaten all the straw. There's no green mold or any kind of contamination. So that's great. And then if we come over here and look at this one, this has very characteristic, this exudate, this is actually enzymes that the mycelium are exuding as they digest the food. So this kind of yellowish or whitish or clearish liquid is actually normal part of the digestion process. So at any given time in your fruiting room, you're gonna have lots of different stages of growth. We have some new ones here just starting to pop out versus these which have been growing maybe for a day. And then they continue to open and we have, this is about where we wanna harvest them where they're still a bit curled under and still robust on the edges. And then down here are a bit overripe where they flattened out completely. And so all of these are perfectly edible, but these are gonna last a lot less time in the fridge and they can get beat up and damaged. Versus if we harvest these, they're gonna hold up until we get them to the market. When it comes time to harvest, we're looking for that kind of curled edge and we're just gonna simply grab the cluster and just pop it off. And so that's a really nice ripeness where that's still curled like that. So uh, we've harvested everything that's ready today, and we'll keep an eye on these. Probably they'll be ready tomorrow, but sometimes we'll check twice a day, sometimes three times a day. It all depends on the outside temperature. So the hotter it is, the more you need to check and make sure you get these at the right time. We'll generally get uh, one good flush about four weeks after we've inoculated the buckets. And then this bucket will rest for another couple weeks and then flush again, and sometimes even a third time. So they can remain in the fruiting room for up to a couple months, but it all depends on how much space you have. So ours tend to leave the room in about a month. Uh, as we talked about, uh, one straw bale, 40 pound straw bale, will do about five or six of these buckets. And about four weeks after inoculation is when you'll get your first fruiting, if you keep all the parameters correct. And off of that first flush, you can often get somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds. And then these can rest and actually fruit two or three more times. And that usually takes a couple weeks before they're ready to go again. So over a one or two month period, you could get as much as 30 or 35 pounds of mushrooms off of a 40 pound bale.